record on this computer. So let's see, and now we'll go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so besides the very first, um, let's see, let me minimize this and open up the chat window so I can make sure I'm seeing people seeing that. Okay, so first thing is automate the boring stuff with Python. This is a good resource outside of the class. Um, oh, new book, Beyond the Boring Stuff. So anyway, it's a book. Can uh, buy it directly from his publisher. It's uh, 40 bucks, 30 bucks for an ebook, but it's released under the create, it's even cheaper on Amazon, but it's released on under the Creative Commons uh, license. So here are all the, so, you know, here's all the chapters in the books um, and you can read those for free. It's a, I don't, I don't list resources unless they're free. Um, it's not to say there's any, there aren't any good paid ones. There are some really good paid ones, but uh, you know. Oh, let's see. Other specific one is, uh, from Green Tea Press, and that is specifically the Think Python 2E. So their second edition, which is again hardcover. Obviously, if you're buying something physical, you'll need something physical. But um, here, available now, Py Think Python 2E. Here we go. I'll go ahead and drop it in the chat. It's also linked in my syllabus. So there you go. There you go. Both of these are in the syllabus, you said? Yep. All right, thank you. So these are beyond the textbook, um, which I think is a de pretty decent textbook. Uh, you can grab a PDF or read it in HTML. Um, you know, so here it is in HTML and here's a PDF of it, right? PDF is nice if you're printing it, the HTML is, better if you're reading it online, I feel. Okay. Um, he also has the LaTeX source code if you want to compile the book yourself. Really? Gets uh, you free access to O'Reilly. How interesting. Did not know that, but that is good to know. Um, but these books are, this book I really like a lot. Um, Al Swigart writes a lot of good textbooks uh, and he does them under a Creative Commons license. And uh, he makes an obscene number of RoboCop jokes. I don't know why, but um, you know. So he, but it is, uh, I have used this textbook previously. What I like about this specific textbook is that it is, um, it is geared towards people who do not intend to become professional programmers. These are intended for people who wanna learn programming and might and want to do things in programming. They want to use programming to basically make sure that their jobs are less boring. Uh, so basically, if you're doing repetitive tasks like entering spreadsheets, and think, couldn't a machine do this? Well, congratulations, you can write yourself a, mach a machine to do this. Um, it will now take like three minutes when it would normally take you three hours, and you can spend those three hours watching cat videos instead. Um, programming having to do any, anything with cybersecurity. Um, it has quite a lot because a lot of times to get to infiltrate into a system and exfiltrate data, you need to write things to do so. Um, being able to write, read and write code on servers is necessary if you're trying to defend. Um, of course, I personally think that uh, that the that one thing that if you're interested in cybersecurity, you should seriously consider is actually taking a number of psychology courses and learning about the cognitive biases that people fall into. Uh, people make biases about the strengths of their systems and what people can and can't do. And uh, it's very good to learn about people's biases because uh, that really does influence, you know, kind of the, you know, their blind spots in our, in our human psychology. Ethical hacking. Um, that's something I'd like to talk about later, but I mean, ethical hack, I mean, it's also part of the term is that we've, we've really, the news media has conflated what the hacking crowd has called hacking and cracking. 
which is hacking is just taking something apart and thinking about it and cracking refers to them more black hat stuff, the malicious stuff. Um, personally, I think it's ethical hacking is legitimate business, white house, oh, sorry, white, uh, white hat security stuff, getting hired by firms to, to, to probe their data and stuff. But anyway, let me go ahead and talk about how we, about what I want to do today. Um, today we're going to, I'm going to basically sort of throw you into the deep end, kind of, but not in a scary way, just in a kind of way that to kind of show you it's not as deep as you thought it was. And you're not as, uh, and you're, and your ability to swim is a bit stronger than you think it is. So the first thing you want to do, though, is um, I do want to just I have a video on this. But for those of you who haven't downloaded Python yet, um, you'll want to go to the Python website. Uh, you'll do this during lab, by the way. You don't need to do this for today. But for reference, for tomorrow, you can go to the Python website, click on Downloads, and it will detect your operating system automatically. So you'll just click on the link. Boom, downloads. Let's throw it on my desktop. Okay, look at that. Isn't, isn't internet speed wonderful these days? You'll run it like something like this. Here it's asking me to upgrade because I already have it. It will be the same kind of thing. Um, there's no, but there'll be a couple other things you can tick like install for all users, but it should work without, without an issue. I know I saw somebody on Discord posted that they had an issue with it. Um, one thing I might suggest if you are having an issue, you could try Anaconda, right? Python Anaconda. Anaconda is a um, is let's see, get started. Let me see every commercial edition, team edition. Really, you have to. It's not free anymore. Boo! Never mind then. It was a nice package for Python. Okay. Uh, Py it is free? Okay. Not really sure where the link is. I'll have to search for the link right now. Pro ah, individual edition. Okay, so it is free. Individual edition. Download it. It's a, it's a, essentially this is Python on, um, and the kitchen sink. It has a ton of other stuff pre-installed with it as well. Okay. Okay, yeah, I just missed, looked at it. Thank you for everybody for correcting me in the chat. I just simply clicked on the wrong place. If you have PyCharm already, would it be either delete and install Python? No, nah, you should be able to work in PyCharm. At the end of the day, I don't really care what you have, um, what you use it. Using an IDE, for those of you who do not know, that's called an integrated development environment. In other words, it is um, a big program with lots of switches and dials and knobs to write your code with, as opposed to an editor, which is this, notice it is not very complicated looking. It just has this and uh, and menus on top, right? There's two basic environments you can program in, an editor and an IDE. Editor is just a small window. Um, you might use other programs in conjunction with an editor. Uh, advantage of an editor is that they're super lightweight. Um, IDEs or integrated development environments are basically sometimes, uh, they can range from something nice and simple to something that looks more like, uh, you know, an aircraft control uh, control panel. So um, there are. So when it comes to an IDE, at least for the first couple assignments, like I mentioned in, dis in the Discord, that is like bringing a, a nuke to a knife fight for the first couple assignments. An editor is just fine, um, but as I was trying to mention, when you download Python. This program called Idle will come pre-installed with it. Now, Python is actually named after Monty Python. Um, so um, believe it or not. And furthermore, uh, Idle is named after Eric Idle. So the um, one of the creators of the Monty Python sketches. So all right. So when you install Python, the program you want to run to do uh, to work on stuff is called idle. That is a very basic integrated, it's a very basic development environment for, for um, Python. Now there's two ways we can, um, yeah, if you don't know about Monty Python, I'm sure you can find some ske uh, sketches on YouTube. So, all right, so Python here, we've got a, 
um, there's two ways you can interact with the Python programming language. Now, again, what is a programming language? A programming language takes commands in English or something resembling English or some other language that we can speak, um, sometimes thrown together with math terms, and it combines it with, um, and sorry, and it takes those and it interprets it into computer code. So for instance, uh, here is a very simple thing I can do on this uh, REPL. One way I can interact with this is called a REPL. It, we're very fond of our acronyms here. REPL just means read, evaluate, print loop, which is the first basic way you can interact with this uh, Python. It is a, this is essentially, um, when you use Python like this, which is not very often, you're essentially using it like a super powerful calculator. Okay. I do appreciate all the Ponty Python references in chat. Um, so most of the time though, we'll be working and creating scripts, which you'll want to do by hitting new file and writing things and then hitting the run. Your TAs will go into more detail as to how to do that. Um, but that's what you're going to be doing in lab. The first, our first lab, which is tomorrow and Friday, the entire focus of the lab is getting Python working on your in computer or your environment. Now, some of you may be working on Chromebooks. Um, if you are working on a Chromebook or an iPad and you're limited in your electronic devices, which is perfectly understandable and it's perfectly understandable, you don't wanna go out and get a new one or can't afford to get a new one. Or you're perhaps running on a, on a computer that just struggles to do anything but a web browser. If we go over here to our modules, Yes, Friday and Monday labs are the exact same labs. They are, they are the exact same content, I should say, right? Over here is a video for installing Python, right? You find it under modules, under, mod, under module one, it's right here. Module one overview, installing Python, right? Here I go over how to install Python. Yes, it's for fall 2020. Somehow I think it's gonna be perfectly fine. Um, Web-based programming options for CIS 1051. Um, you can do all of your web uh, coding. All labs are at nine o'clock, 9 a.m. But be it on Friday or Monday. So all web-based options are uh, basically are just programming in your web browser. Um, there's two great solutions, both of which are free, one of which comes in your textbook. Okay. Speaking of your textbook, uh, I hope you've had the chance to register for your textbook. If you haven't, go to Runestone Academy, right? And what you'll want to do is go and click here to sign up. Click sign up, type in, create a username for yourself, name, Rosen, let's see. Well, sorry, you want to not sign up. I need to log out first to show you. Log out. Sorry, now sign up. Let's create a new account. Okay, so here we go. U username, first name, last name, give me, you put in your email, create a password, right? Hold on one second. Okay, one second about the labs. I will get that. Let me finish the RuneStone registration thing and, okay because we're gonna be working on RuneStone today, okay? So first off, here's all the RuneStone registration stuff. Username, first name, last name. Please use your uh, name, either the name that's put into Canvas here, or if you don't do that, put in your TU email over here. This is so my grader can uh, can do that. So, my, so when I export grades, it's easier for me to merge the grades with Canvas. So just use your TU, letter or something, 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 okay? Um, and then for the course name, this is just simply so we know wh which course to throw you in. It should be spring, spring 2021 Rosen, okay? Click this, don't click this because you don't need to cl create the course, it already exists. Um, now with regards to where, if you, if that went too fast for you, don't worry, guess what? It's on Canvas as well. Canvas is like my, um, yep, my bad about the, I, I didn't fix the syllabus. So, okay, right over here, 
Just click on here, spring 2020 run one to sign up. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Is it okay if we use, cause I made up my account already and I used it with a personal email. Um, Is that okay? If you, did you use your, the name that's the same name as on Canvas? Yes. All right. So I made a mistake here. One second with regards to uh, section five. Boom. There's section six. Okay. Now with regards to that, all the links for labs are here, but I'm sure the TAs will send out the links. And if they do not, I will send out the links tomorrow, but they will send out their links. But you just simply click on the respective link for your TA. Yeah. Oh, cool. You can change your uh, e email on RuneStone. Okay. So just click on your respective link for your lab section, whatever section you're in. And that's it. Spring 2021, Rosen. Okay. So I'm going to give everybody about, oh, well, let's say, let's say three to five minutes to, to sign up for RuneStone. Okay. I'll be monitoring chat in case there's any issues, um, but I'll give you some time to sign up for RuneStone and then we can work on our first um, assign assignment or first in-class exercise, which is a preview of the end goal as it's put. So, um, need the Jeopardy theme song. Okay. So spring or Benny Hill, that's more appropriate possibly. Okay, so instructor's page here, assignments. Do, 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 do. Project one. And it should be visible to you guys, great. My plan for today is also to give you a, to, uh, a detailed tour of this web of this website so, um, or of the textbook so you understand. Uh, for reference, when are my office hours? For my office hours, again, go to Canvas. Yes, it doesn't sit, list them, but just simply click here and it will have the slots that are currently open. Um, so they are two to four, they are two to four on Monday, six to eight on Wednesday and 10 to 11, uh, sorry, 10 to 12 on Thursday. Um, if you, yep. If you're not attending attending in person, you will just use the Zoom link. I will. I'm going to double check with the with them. Uh, if that changes and I have to host, um, you'll use my link. But I'll send you an email about the sp single section that is hybrid. But so my email. So again, these are my office hours. However, they are not the only office hours that you can that you can uh, that you can meet me with. You can send me an email. The somebody asked, "What is the code?" It is spring twenty twenty one. Rosen. You know, I'm wondering if the issue is I did I ever upload my uh, updated syllabus to I know I did for the other course, but now I can't remember if I did for this course, and that might be the issue. Nothing changed except for the date. I yeah, I originally signed up for the old textbook on your because of this. My syllabus. bad on that. I'm sorry. It's been a it's been a hectic couple of weeks. If you've been paying attention to the news, a bit hectic, kind of glued to your screen kind of deal. Um. So yes, it is not a dumb question, Stanley. Uh, it says that if if you if you have Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, that means your lab is on Monday. Yes, Tuesday and Thursday are your lectures. Monday is, and you either will have lab on Monday or Friday. Uh huh. So now, um, are people good on on RuneStone? Have we signed up? Are the readings due tonight? Do people need more time on the readings? 
because I can change the due date. The due dates are soft due dates. Can I, I had, I'm not gonna lie, I had no idea there were readings. Okay, it's no problem. So let's go ahead, instructor, because again, it kind of just migrated the dates. So no worries, let's go to assignments. Chapter one reading, right? So let's just slap it down to Monday. Save that. Or so Sunday rather. And again, let's just change that to Sunday. Okay. With yeah, you can totally take notes by writing. You can totally take notes by typing. But what I'm trying to do in these classes over here, in what we're about to do is do more active learning. Your note taking will most likely be when you're watching the recordings that I have. Um, and that's perfectly acceptable to, to do notes. In fact, I'm a fan of pencil and paper. If for no other reason, then you won't have a giant distraction machine in your hands uh, while you're working. So let's go ahead and take a look at, at um, our, so you can find a list of assignments over here. I'll be posting them in the module overview pages. So they'll be cross-linked on Canvas and on this page. So that, so you, each module will have, will have what information about what you need. I will migrate those due dates over. Um, the due dates for these are, are super soft. Okay. Like these are like soft due dates as when you probably should have them done as opposed to when you should have as opposed to when you need them done, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so now um, preview, so this is a project's first kind of thing and we're kind of going over chapter one today. Um, well, we did a bit yesterday, but we're gonna take a look at the preview for the end go goal. So go ahead and click on that in the project list on top over here. Skills required and open mind. So you don't really need to know much about this. So, um, so I find computer programming to be extremely rewarding because it is a problem solving process. It is all about like uh, puzzle solving and stuff like that. You can do a ton of stuff with code, but as they say, we would not expect you to sit down on the, uh, the piano for the first time and play Beethoven's, uh, one of Beethoven's piano sonatas, uh, you know, just from scratch. You have to work up to that with practice. I, I find that there's a lot of comparison between the skill of programming and the skill of play, playing music. You're expected when playing music to do everything right. Uh, you can't have a single wrong note, otherwise that might ruin the performance. And the only way you get good enough to do that with music is practice. Similarly, with computer science, your code has to compile, can't have any errors in it. And the only way you get better at computer science is practice. Yes, people ha some people are more naturally inclined to do one thing over another, but uh, you find yourself relying on your natural skill too much without any practice, you're going to hit a wall eventually, like I did. Uh, practice is the way you get better at this, and it doesn't matter what your skill level is. So one of the cool things about this, um, so yeah, so let me just see. So yeah, the texts that are in this book may seem primitive compared to some of the other stuff we do, um, but it is really strong. Um, and also it may, another thing to point out is the interpreter itself. That is the Python program or the program on your computer, or in this case in the web browser that will take Python code and translate it, right? It interprets it. Um, it may seem incredibly annoying as programming languages only do what you tell them. Think of the, as of the interpreter or in other programming languages, the compiler as an evil genie. It's gonna do exactly what you tell it, even if it's just gonna troll you by doing exactly what you tell it, right? So they don't do what you mean, they do exactly what you tell them. So that often means that like, you're gonna have that a lot of your frustration in this class is going to be unfortunately self-inflicted. Uh, when, um, when you basically use one variable when you meant to use another, when you use an I, when you meant to use a J. Um, this is okay. This is normal. It does not mean you're dumb. It's something that everybody goes through. Okay. Don't let it discourage you. It says, right. Even the textbook author agrees with me. So let's take a look at this Python program. 
okay? Looks like a bunch of gobbledygook and it's kind of scary and it's got numbers thr thrown in. And it actually looks mildly intimidating to me, except for the fact that I already know what it does, but it gives us a good um, example of just kind of the power of what this online textbook has. So it's a Python program. And what it says is that it's gonna convert a color image to black and white. You may be or may not be able to figure that out by doing that, but let's go ahead. All you have to, what you can do is just hit the save and run button and you can see and that it's actually running the code there, which is pretty cool. It's running, it's running this code and turning this picture black to white. Um, so how's it doing this? Well, we've got this function called process 11, which takes in an image, right? And you're not supposed to be able to understand this, but I'm just kind of explaining it for the benefit of, of less waving my hand and saying magic. It figures out how big the picture is, gets its height and uh, width. And then it says, hey, for every row and column combination, get the pixel. What's a pixel? A pixel is, um, as we'll learn in more detail later, is something we call, it's short for picture element, right? Um, if you kind of just get really close to your computer and your screen, and you're not using one of those uh, high fancy uh, MacBook with retinas displays, you should be able to look in and see that your, the, your computer image is made up of tons and tons of tiny squares, right? Each of those is a pixel. Your standard display um, is, a, is a 1080p uh, display. 1920 by 1080. So there are 1920 by 1080 pixels. Um, and if you do the math, that's like, well, that's well over a million pixels on a computer. Um, so, or on a computer monitor. Each of those are just individual things and each of those are given an individual color. And it works kind of like painting. It, you give it, it mixes red, greens, and blues to get the amount. And what this does is says it gets these three values, red, green, and blue, figures out, hey, um, is it colorful? If, you, if so, turn it black. Is it not colorful? Make it white. Or maybe it's the other way around. I always have to look that up. But then it just changes the color there and tells it to go on to the next one. And as you can see, it's done. Yep. So, up, oh, yes, yeah, the first one. If the average of red, green, and blue is more than 127, make uh, then make a new new all white pixel. I'm sure some of you are asking why 127. That seems like a magic number. It is a magic number. Don't worry about that. That's not something that you have to understand now. Okay. So, the following. So, in here, we have ten different image processing functions. Here they are. Process one, process two, process three, process four, and I'm going by them really quickly because the specifics don't matter here too much. And we have two pictures, yawning squirrel.jpg and lutherbellpick.jpg. Your first task today is to experiment with the different functions to see what they do. You can use either of the images here. Right. For instance, here they're working with yawning squirrel.jpg. If you want to work with the Luther Bell picture instead, copy that name and just replace it in here. But otherwise, control Z to do that. Right. Here's the original, final. Right. So you've got this thing. So let's see what it says. It says, here's the original picture. And notice it's, this says process 10. So you hit save and run. And this will run process 10, which does this and makes the uh, squirrel look quite demonic, to be honest. Um, if, I change, if I change this to process one, it will run process one instead. Oh, interesting. What an interesting effect. So um, now, if you just, now if you're worried about touching it, uh, touching this because you fear like that messing with a computer is like, uh, or messing with computer, computer, com uh, these are already defined. They're defined in this window above here. Okay, they're, they're user defined. They're, or rather they are instructor defined. Okay, but going back to this, if you're worried about messing with this with the, with the code, like it's uh, some kind of uh, time bomb and you accidentally mess with it a bit much and 
you know, you're going to mess everything up. Uh, we have a nice handy history function here, which is that uh, as you make changes to the code, right? Let's say process gobbledygook, right? I try to run it. Should error on me. Yes, it did. It says error process 19458. And oh God, what's going on? Well, you can just revert your changes. It will keep track of your changes as you do them. Include, you can go all the way back to the original. So what is your first task? Your first task is a matching task. Figure out what to do. Now, some of this will require some interpretation. Notice that, um, that basically that some of these have one item between parentheses. But some of these have two or three items between parentheses. So you might have to figure out how that works and experiment a bit. But this is all about experimenting and discovering here. OK? Um, so we'll go ahead and work on this for, let's say, 10 minutes before we see, uh, before we see um, where we need to be. Now, let's go ahead and before we make this a completely solo exercise, do you mind if I just simply open up breakout rooms for you people and you can go ahead and move into breakout rooms? That sound good to everybody? Okay, um, let's go ahead and because there's so many people, I'm gonna go ahead and create 20 great uh, breakout rooms for you guys. I'm gonna let you turn uh, create your own rooms. Okay, I've opened them up and go ahead and join your own room. I will close the rooms when it is when we're time when time is run out and we'll see where we're going. Or we'll see how we're doing. Okay. And stop share. Oh, and be sure to, and don't be afraid to ask other, uh, your fellow classmates for help. If you're having issues with this, please ask your, your fellow classmates for help. Like I said, I, this is, I'm throwing you straight into the deep end here. So don't be afraid to ask for help. some people can't get into breakout rooms. So I'm just going to eat people into random breakout rooms. Um, so ZE for the textbook, you need to, um, for the textbook, you need to use the code, uh, the code I have to sign up, which is spring 2021 Rosen.
<clears throat> Any questions so far? Uh, nothing as of yet. You know, these breakout rooms are not really evenly distributed at all. 